one in fifty. I know the hour is late. I know we're we've all eating a little tired, getting ready to eat some more, and probably feeling that nap coming on. But we're gonna, if y'all praise with me, we'll get out of here quickly. Amen. Get on to the, the, the celebration afterwards. Amen. Amen. Here's what God's word says. I'm reading from the New English translation. Praise the Lord. Praise God in the sanctuary. Praise him in the sky which testifies to his strength. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the blast of the horn. Praise him with the lyre and the harp. Praise him with the tambourine and with dancing. Praise him with stringed instruments and the flute. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise him with clanging cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. The sermon is to have a title. This one is Praise is What I Do. Amen. When you read through the Psalms, these last five Psalms, see God when he writes the Bible and he inspired folks to put the Bible together, it wasn't by happenstance. You know, you have these newfangled theologians that want to tell you all this other crazy yes. stuff. But the truth of the matter is the Bible was inspired by God. Yes. If somebody tells you something different, just look at them and say, that's all right for you. I know what my Bible says. Amen? Because we have scientific, archaeological proof that the Bible is what it says it is. These other folk, I'm not sure where they're getting their information from. But it's there. But these last five psalms in the book of Psalms are known as the Hallelujah Psalms because they each begin and end with the word Hallelujah, which is translated, praise the Lord. Amen. Did y'all know that? When you say Hallelujah, that's the same thing as saying praise the Lord. See, the word Hallelujah is a Hebrew word which consists of two words, Hallel, which means to boast, and Yah, which is a short form of Yahweh, which is the Hebrew name from God. So therefore, hallelujah means I'm calling a boast to the Lord, to give honor and praise. So when I say hallelujah, guess what? I'm ticking the enemy off. Amen. See, remember, he used to be the praise and worship leader in heaven. He used to lead the worship to God. In fact, his name Lucifer contains part of hallelujah in it. Y'all know that? So when he got booted out of heaven, every time we say hallelujah reminds him of what he used to have. He doesn't like it. It's like we're rubbing it in his face. Like, uh-huh, you used to be there. Uh-huh, now you can't do it now, huh? Okay. So every time we get down and distressed and we say hallelujah, it's like hitting the devil right in the face. See, sometimes we get caught up in our circumstances and what we're doing and we forget we have weapons that are not carnal, but are mighty to pull down strongholds. We have weapons that God has given us where all we got to do is say it and we make the enemy mad. Just say hallelujah. hallelujah. Stuff starts going bad. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Say it again. Hallelujah. hallelujah. See, he's getting, he getting tore up right now. All right. See, what he wants to do is get you caught up in such a situation that you forget whose you are and who, who belongs to you and who your father is and who your, who your brother is. And you get to down and depressed and, oh, Lord, you know, let me just, and we forget that Jesus is going to fix it. Yes. But we got to praise him. Yes. Amen. See, choirs are all about praising God. Amen. Unfortunately, what, we, what happens in church is we get sophisticated as we start... We stop doing what God right. called us to do. All right, say that. See, we were created to worship God. Yes. Y'all hear that? Yes. We weren't created to get rich and drive Mercedes oh God, and have a big house yes. and wear fancy clothes. We were created to worship yes. God. Yes. And when we're going through trials and tribulation, yes. what does the word say? 
Mourning may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. How does the joy come? You gotta praise him. When Paul and Silas got thrown into prison, they didn't sit down and say, Woe is me. I wonder where God is now, you know. We're out there preaching and raising the dead and healing the sick, and now we're in prison. Woe is me. What did they start doing around midnight? They start saying, Jesus, he will fix it. 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 started happening. All of a sudden, it started shaking down there. Because God said, I inhabit the praises of my people. God came down to the prison and shook them loose. Yes. What? See, most of us, we'd have been in prison just hoping some more come visit us. Hoping some more write us. They started praising God. And God freed them from the prison. Amen? See, when you read this scripture, it says, praise is what we're supposed to do. Because it says, Everything that has breath, praise, praise the Lord. The Lord. Amen. He said, praise him in the sanctuary. Right. That means that's in, the right. that's in church. Right. That's in the Amen. Don't tell nobody when we're supposed to be loud in church. All right. Did I say that? All right. See, we get so sophisticated now we clap at church. Praise God, that was that was good. All right. All right. Yeah. Start critiquing the choir. Mm, well, you know, if she had hit that that C note a little bit better. <laughs> right. Because we've forgotten why we're supposed to come here. Right. We're supposed to enter his courts with Thanksgiving. What? Thanksgiving. And praise. Praise and Thanksgiving isn't quiet. See, tonight there's going to be a Spurs game All right. in Miami. All right. All right. And here's what you're not, this is not going to happen. Guarantee you this. All right. And Tim Duncan has scored a basket. <laughs> it's not going to be. It's not going to be. That was, that was nice to get that down. That was really nice. The other night when Tony Parker hit that one shot, I can tell you what I was doing in my house. Yeah! <laughs> so when I get in church, and I think about the good things God has done for me, and I think of how he saved my wretched soul, and I think about everything he's done, I can shout out! Hallelujah! I can praise him! something you get loud about. Yes. Get loud about God. Right. See, when he says the sky worships, that's heaven. The angels worship him all the time. 
In fact, there are angels in heaven that have six wings. Two to cover their eyes and two to cover their feet. And the other one's flapping and saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. That's all they do. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Praising God. We have what angels never thought about having. And how much do we praise God? When bills may not get paid, what's the first thing you start getting panic by? Yes. Instead of praising God for what we have. As a people, we've been through a lot. Think about all the things we go through on a regular basis. Think about what ancestors went through. Think of what the founding fathers of this country went through. We have a right to praise God. We have freedom to praise God. There are Christians in other countries that have to go undercover. They have to be quiet because if they pray a little too loud, the police will come knock on the door and take them to jail. There are pastors getting persecuted in Iran because they refuse not to praise God. And here in America, we're taking Starbucks into the church now. Well, did I say that? Yeah. Then I'm sure you can go, go buy coffee, get your coffee, and bring it in the church, which can lay it down. And nobody knows how to really praise God anymore. And that's what he wants. He wants praise. He wants you to praise him. He said everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Because at the end, every knee shall bow. And every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. Well, why do we need to praise God? Well, first of all, let's just stop at the fact that He created the world. When we were driving here from Gonzales down the road, my wife and I were looking, and she goes, Wow, it is. Look how beautiful this is. There isn't an artist alive that could have drawn that. In fact, they get their inspiration from his creation. That's something to praise God about. Even the oil wells, you see the oil wells pumping that oil. Who created the oil? God did that. That's helping our economy out, amen? That's something to praise God about. How many of y'all breathing right now? Huh? That's something to praise God about. When I was when I was a kid, my grandma said, thank God for a blood running warm in my veins, mind fixed on Jesus. I used to wonder what she meant until I got a certain age and realized, hey, thank God I got a Thank God I can get out of bed. Thank God I can breathe. Wasn't for God, I couldn't do that. That's something to praise him about. Look at what he did for us at Calvary. Yes. We didn't deserve yes. salvation. We didn't deserve yes. justification. Yes. We didn't deserve sanctification. Yes. He went to the cross and died for something yes. he didn't do. Yes. He died for you and I. Yes. He loved us so much he stretched his yes. arms wide and said, God, yes. forgive them. Because they don't know what they're doing. That's right. Acting out right. foolish, acting all crazy, doing uh -huh. stupid stuff, uh -huh. doing stuff they know is right, calling right, wrong, and wrong, right. That's what the church needs to do on America today. Praise God. We're getting all involved in politics. Mercy. You know, we either on the right side or left side. We, you know, depend on who's in office. We holler about what the president did and ain't doing. What about what God is doing? See, the Bible says that I'm in the world, but not of the world. I'm an ambassador to this world. That means I represent a different person. I represent the Most High. That's my president. Jesus Christ is who I serve. That's my Lord and Savior. That's why I praise Him. Doesn't matter what the president does. At the, in the end, he doesn't have help in or help putting the end. Jesus went to a cross for me. He went to a cross for you. And that's all I should be worried about. Oh, I'll vote because I'll render unto Caesar what's Caesar's. But I have to give to God what is God's. I have to praise God. 
He is greater than anything you can imagine. When I think about a God who thousands of years ago looked down and saw me in need and provided a way for me to not die and go to hell. Gotta praise him. See, this psalm is not just about getting excited. It's also about reverencing God and understanding what has he, he done for me. See, I, I should take everything I have and praise him. Whether it's musical instruments. There's some churches don't believe in instruments. I don't know why, because when I read the word, it says instruments. Yes, that's right. We should give God everything we have. We should give him our voices. We should give him our talk. We should give him, take our gifts and use them all for God. Because in the end, that's all that's going to count. If you don't praise him for anything else, I don't care if he doesn't do anything else for you. If he saved your soul, praise him. Because he's everything. Jesus is the center of our joy. Jesus is the center of it all. And because he is, I praise him. See, praise is what I do because he's done everything for me. If I'm going to shout for Tim Duncan, I sure enough am going to shout for Jesus. If I'm going to get excited because Beyonce is at halftime, I'm going to get excited about Jesus on Sunday morning. That's what that psalm was about. That's what choirs are for. Choirs should be an accompaniment to us singing. We shouldn't be sitting around on our blessed assurance listening to the choir. We should be standing up, praising along with That's right. When stuff was talking about the two been through good days and bad days, I had tears coming down. I've been through good. Been through bad. Praise the Lord. Despite all that. Stand your feet.